Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. You're watching Indigo Tech Tutorials. And in this video, I want to tell you about the best UI library for Ruby on Rails. So this is something that I've heard about for a while and it's called Flowbyte. So if you guys have been in the Rails community, you probably have heard about Flowbyte. And I have too. I've, I've seen it in a lot of Tailwind UI examples. But I always thought that it was a paid component pack and for whatever reason whenever I went to this website I would just get confused I didn't know that it was free but if you look it actually says it's open source and there's all of these different UI components and another great thing is that they have a direct integration with rails so if you go over here to the integration guides they have rails listed and they have really easy installation guides so it works with tailwind CSS and the new setup, you don't have to use NPM or anything. You can just go down to the import map setup. And it's really this simple. So I followed this one by using it through the CDN. And it worked really, really well for me. And I was just blown away how this really does seem like the best UI library for Rails. I mean, compared to Tailwind CSS, or what is it called? Tailwind UI. If we go there... Um, it's paid so you to get all access it's gonna cost you like three hundred dollars which I mean isn't a crazy amount of money for a lot of companies because you're already spending all this money on developers and stuff but as someone who's building your own apps you may not want to use this now I think they give you one component for free the first one is always free but then to get the other ones you have to pay upgrade and one thing that I've noticed is that a lot of companies use this so if you start using these components, your site's just going to look like basically every other website out there that's using Tailwind. With Flowbyte, I don't know if that many people use this. Like, the components look a little bit... And they also... Almost the components look better than the ones on Tailwind UI. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to show you guys how we can use this right away and build a little app using Flowbyte. And this is probably what I'm going to use going forward if I don't want to... If I don't feel like writing custom UI... I'm just going to go straight for Flowbyte and copy in the components. And I'll probably even start using it in my tutorials because it's completely free and it's super easy to set up. So let's just get started with a new app. I'm going to go in the console and generate a Rails app. I'll just call it Flowbyte Test. And I am going to specify Tailwind as the CSS framework because Flowbyte uses Tailwind. All right, so my app just finished generating. So now I'm going to CD into this Flowbyte Test. And right away, I'm just going to get us a simple home page so that we can test out some of these components. So I'm going to run a Rails G controller command, and we're going to generate a pages controller with a home action. Boom, just like that. We now have this new action. And then I'm just going to open up our app in the code editor, which I'm using VS Code like usual. Now that we're inside of here, I'm going to go over to the config routes.rb. Okay. So now I'm going to set the home page as the root of the app. And you'll notice inside the config routes.rb, we have this new get for page slash home. We can just remove that because I don't really want that route. And instead, we'll go down to the bottom here. I'm going to uncomment the root. And I'm going to replace the post index with the pages and the home action. So now what will happen is if we start our server with bin slash dev, uh, it should start up our app on localhost 3000 and it'll render the pages home action, which will just render the home page. Cool. So right away, we can start adding in components. Although actually, wait, I take that back. We need to run the install script for Flowbyte. So let's go over to Flowbyte. You can find the integration guides and let's go over to the Rails section. Now they're, they show you like the full process from even installing Rails. We already did most of this. We already have Tailwind, so we can skip past this. Uh, let's also not install it with NPM because we're not using NPM. We're using import maps. So really all we need to do is add this line of code to our import map to RB, which is over in config, uh, config import map to RB. So you can also, they have the option to say like bin slash import map pin flow byte. But the problem that I saw when I did this is that it it tried to download Flowbyte locally and it broke a lot of things. Like it, the components actually didn't work. But when I did it via the CDN, it worked perfectly fine. So that's what we're gonna do. So the next step 
was to import flowbyte into our application JS. So I'm going to do that by going over to the app JavaScript and then there's the application JS file. I'm going to drop in the import for flowbyte. And that's it actually. That's all you need to do to import flowbyte. So now we can go and add in some components. So I can go back to the home page and let's go over to explore components and we can find some good ones to test out. And as you can see, there's like so many components to go through. It's actually pretty awesome. And I think for whatever sort of app you're building, you can easily find components. Like let's go over to the data tables, see what that looks like. So that's just a basic table like that. It's not, that one's not even that cool, uh, but there's some really good components in here. Let me see what else they have. Let's go to maybe cards. See, like that's not a bad component. It already has a drop down and everything out of the box. So all you have to do is press copy and we can go and drag that into our home page. Boom. And then we can go back reload. And as you can see, we get the whole component. It already looks great. Uh, the reason why the image isn't loading is because it's looking for a local image. So if you look for that source right here, we don't have that image, but we can easily add our own image. So I'll probably just go over to Unsplash, find a random image to use. This one looks like it works. Wow, that's a big image. Like I said, my Wi-Fi is really bad right now. <laughs> Let's try to download a super small one. All right, that should work. I'm gonna stick it in the app assets images folder. I don't even know what to call it. I'm just gonna call it paint, paint.jpg. So now to stick it into the source, we're gonna pass in the asset URL which will you know, find out where the path is inside of our assets folder. All you have to do is put in the name of the asset, which is paint.jpg, reload, and boom, we have that image showing up. And it already, this is a whole component. Check this out. You can click on the dropdown. We didn't write any stimulus. You know, in my videos, how I'm always showing you guys, like let's add the dropdown to the nav bar. And we have to create the whole dropdown controller with even the code to like handle clicking outside of the component you no longer have to ever do that again with flowbyte because they already took care of it which is crazy i can't believe i never messed with this look at this e-commerce card look at how clean this looks and this would probably take me like a good hour of coding getting everything right because doing the front end is almost like it's like painting a picture you know you have to get everything right move the padding so to have components like this out of the box is pretty game changing. And I just never knew that there was a good UI library for Rails. Boom, check that out. We have a new product image just like that. And I'm gonna replace that source, of course. Source, of course. <laughs> I feel like Dr. Seuss right now. But that's how it feels when you when you start getting productive. Check this out. We have this whole product card. It looks a little bit different though, but I think it's because they're using a PNG image and R1 is not PNG, so it kind of like sticks out a little bit more. We can also fix the height thing. See how the height got stretched? That's just because there's no container on this right now. We just have like a container where we do flex and then flex wrap. Oh. And then let the elements decide how much, how high they should be. Let's see, let's see. That didn't actually change anything. I'll probably add margin bottom auto on both of these components. I have a feeling that that will help. Auto, auto, there we go. So now it'll determine, you know, this card looks right. This one, it looks a little bit large, but I think it's because the image doesn't have a fixed height or something. So wherever we're right here, we're showing the image. Yeah, we're, we don't have any sort of fixed height on it. So if we at least gave it like a height 40, 
that doesn't really look right so let's do height 64 with full object cover and this should fit a lot better there we go pretty clean and then we can even add gap around our elements just by putting some gap on the top level yeah this is already just insane that we have these components right out of the box we can keep testing out more components so i think you can either explore on this components page but also on the left side there is a list of all the different components that you can use this one i like look they even have a keyboard so if you're going to use some sort of visual keyboards type of thing they have that all built out like if you're going to show the a hawk key or something that they could use in the app that is pretty cool I'm trying to think what else they have how about gallery so this could be for something like the airbnb tutorial that i did where we're rendering all the images exactly look at this or even this could be like the TikTok profile page. It could have just been a one-liner instead of like, you know, my tutorials get kind of long sometimes. So it's just insane to find a UI library that actually works and supports Rails. Because like I said, I think like the JavaScript works. I don't know how it works, but it somehow works. That dropdown totally worked. And I didn't write any JavaScript by hand. Boom, check that out. We have cards on the left. We have gallery on the right. This already looks like some sort of weird app. <laughs> I'm going to try to see if they have a nav bar, which I'm sure they have like five different nav bars. Yeah, look, nav bar right here. So we have the default nav bar. Not bad. We have nav bars with drop downs. Check this out. This is the stuff that I would, I would spend like an hour building this basically but we don't have to do that anymore. So I'm just gonna drop in the nav bar at the top here. This also brings me back to, remember that time I did the website building application? There's like drag and drop Tailwind components. If I just used, um, that was weird. The nav bar didn't really show up. I think I need to add fixed top zero. So yeah, if I just, there we go. We got a little nav bar. I think it needs width full too. There we go. I think that's how it's supposed to look. Let's go back to the component. Yeah, that basically looks right. There's no background color, but but check this out. The drop down works. Right out of the box, it works, which is insane. No drop down controller needed. I don't even know how. Uh, we can probably look. I think it's using stimulus too, which is pretty cool. We even have like data drop downs toggle. Oh yeah, I, I was messing with this. So I do kind of know how you have to specify a little bit of, like you have to link the stuff together. So if you had multiple components, uh, you'd probably want to change this name to make it unique. And it's gonna use like the ID or the, some sort of data attribute, but that's really not that bad because you can just do that instead of spending the time to build all of this UI. You can just change a couple things, make it work, and you have a whole app. Like you saw, this just took not that long to put this all together, even though it doesn't look... But even then the mobile responsive too, right out of the box, the mobile responsive is great. Like this app isn't even set up that properly, and it still looks pretty good on mobile. All right, anyways, I just want to tell you guys about Flowbyte. I'm probably going to start using this on my channel more. And I suggest you to check it out. I know I've heard about it from a couple people, but I just never realized how great it was somehow.